I'm slowly getting more into modern history of the diaspora, and while doing research, I was absolutely captivated by one very extraordinary woman named Stephanie St. Clair, the black woman who took on some of the most ruthless New York mobsters. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you are helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like to show your support, you may do so by clicking the link in the description box below. To begin, this video is not at all a celebration of how Stephanie St. Clair made her riches, nor is it to establish some sort of judgment about her daily activities. Our focus today is to point out two characteristics about Stephanie St. Clair that I feel are very important for our community. These characteristics are fearlessness and determination. Too often are the women in our community left unprotected or unsupported, whether it be physical, emotional, or economic. This has been historically true ever since families were broken apart during the Atlantic slave trade. Black men and women were enslaved and tortured and left to deal with generational trauma. This trauma unfortunately was exemplified in the life of Miss St. Clair, and it no doubt shaped the path she took. It would seem as though, due to her past, that she was determined to never feel unprotected again, and she accomplished this by any means necessary. Stephanie St. Clair was an American gambler and entrepreneur that also participated in other illegal activities according to New York State law. She was born on the island of Guadalupe in the Caribbean, the tenacity, strength, and fearlessness of Miss St. Clair is certainly worthy of note. She ran the numbers racket in Harlem, fought the mob, and won, and made full-page ads boasting about herself while expressing her socio-political views. Miss St. Clair made sure that she was well-dressed in all her ads, and that, no doubt, increased her popularity. Almost immediately after arriving at Ellis Island in 1911, St. Clair traveled north to Montreal, where her mother had arranged for her to work as a domestic. Within five years, St. Clair crossed back into the U.S. and made her way to Harlem, where she reportedly found work at a dress factory and worked for a racketeer who was running numbers in an organized illegal betting ring. She amassed a savings of $10,000, and using that money, she launched her own operation in 1923. This was very impressive considering many black people were not offered opportunities during that time. In the 1920s, black people owned less than 20% of Harlem's businesses. Running a successful so-called policy bank required hard work, business savvy, and the ability to steward an array of parties with various interests. Policy banking was a mixture of investing, gambling, and playing the lottery. Black entrepreneurs did this largely due to lack of opportunity. Even though policy banking wasn't legal, it was one of the only ways black people in Harlem could economically empower themselves. Bankers like St. Clair were expected to act as neighborhood guardians, loaning money, funding community projects, and exerting their authority to keep rogues in line when the police couldn't be bothered. To receive and manage money, they had to hire and run a crew on whom they could depend on and trust. They also had to pay off the police every week. Miss St. Clair did all of that very successfully and was called Queenie by the local people. Within a short time, she was making a quarter million dollars a year. She was one of the largest so-called policy bankers in Harlem at that time. Her success allowed her to live on an expensive avenue in an area nicknamed Sugar Hill with neighbors like Madam C.J. Walker, the beauty product tycoon, W.E.B. Du Bois, the scholar and activist, and Thurgood Marshall, an attorney and future Supreme Court Justice. But all that began to change when the Great Depression hit, when the economy suffered and the profits of white mobsters began to take a huge plunge, they began to come into Harlem, Madame St. Clair's territory. The notorious bootlegger Dutch Schultz began a violent takeover of Harlem operations and quickly succeeded in putting most of St. Clair's colleagues out of business. Dutch had Harlem afraid. It seemed as though everybody bowed to him once he arrived. But of course, being the strong, determined woman she was, Madame St. Clair refused. She's quoted as saying, I'm not afraid of Dutch Schultz or any other man living. He'll never touch me. 
Dutch began making phone calls threatening her, kidnapping and murdering her men, buying off select police, and even at one point got her arrested. St. Clair got quick revenge, however, and attacked his storefronts and any business that ran his operations. She tipped the police off to Schultz's operations, which led to them raiding his clearinghouse, arresting 14 employees and seizing around $2 million. Being the confident, fearless woman she was, she even bragged about it in the press. When Dutch was finally murdered by another mobster, she reportedly rushed the telegram to his hospital bed and sent him a message saying, So you sow, so shall ye reap. Now some claim she had something to do with this murder, but we aren't entirely sure, so we'll leave it at that. Eventually, Miss St. Clair handed her empire off to the infamous Bumpy Johnson. There's currently a series about his life called The Godfather of Harlem, but it's interesting to note that there would be no Bumpy without Madame Stephanie St. Clair. Miss St. Clair went to jail for three years, and after that, it's assumed that she died in comfort and still relatively wealthy. Some may say that her legacy is a mixed bag, but it does need to be put in proper context before drawing any final conclusions, especially considering the historical, economic, and physical siege black people were forced to endure under the state. Just remember that when recalling her story, she was also very community-oriented. Most of her newspaper ads were spent educating black people about their rights, advocating for voting rights, and calling out police brutality, and she also financed a number of community projects. Like I stated from the beginning, her spirit of fearlessness and determination is to be admired, and it's something we can draw from and use in positive ways for the betterment of our community, especially because we have more opportunity for advancement today. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, please consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.